Hi. Uh, for the last week here, uh, one of our discussion questions talks about trends and stress for the 21st century, so I want to kind of weigh in on my thoughts here. Um, <clears throat> the first one that I think I'm seeing, and I'm already beginning to see it, is is uh, an increase in uh, ageism. Um, you know, a couple of years ago I attended the Association for Change Management Professionals and and there were a lot of change agents there discussing it, that, that they were seeing it and and having people report it to them. Um, 80 in a survey uh, in 2003, and this was before it started getting bad, uh, um, over 80 percent of uh, people over 60 uh, reported experiencing age discrimination. Uh, results in, uh, it, it results in either the person being unemployed or underemployed, and certainly uh, being forced in out of their employment before they were ready. Uh, there were 19,000 complaints on age discrimination filed with the EEOC between 2002 and 2004, and over 21,000 in 2013 alone, so you can kind of see the trend there. Um, kind of a, an example uh, of this, uh, um, executive turns 50 and suddenly becomes uh, the highest paid employee uh, among highest, highly compensated employees, so the, there's a need for layoff and it's it's the over 50 highly compensated executives that get the layoff and they're replaced by younger, less expensive uh, um, executives and what they do, they end up into um, a search and number one they find out that other stores don't want to hire them at that level of compensation. Um, there's really not much of a market in the middle class stores for executives, so what they end up doing is they end up finding themselves in uh, um, like lower end uh, retail or if it was in the retail industry or in, in entry level, more entry level type jobs uh, for less compensation or compensation that was more comparable to the beginning of their career. And it's very frustrating uh, to them, and this is even for the ones that do find work, many uh, are, are unable to find it. So I think this is a trend, I think we're going to see more of it, and uh, it doesn't seem to be a lot of sympathy for it in the courts. Um, another one is um, income inequality and the shrinking middle class. And uh, uh, there's a strain on businesses that serve the middle class. Schwartz, for example, recently uh, reported uh, um, Olive Garden and Red, Red Lobster that were really struggling because they serve the middle class, where a high-end restaurant like Capitol Grill was really doing well, and, and the f fast food that uh, cater to the lower um, income levels continue to do well. Um, in the ex executive example where the executive, uh, uh, you know, just one example, executive loses in retail, um, loses his job due to age, and then finds out that the, the middle, the retail that s services middle class is not doing well, so they're not hiring. So that eliminates the high end and the middle class, and they end up all that's left is our low end jobs, and uh, and that's if and they're lucky to even get those at all. And and these uh, this ageism usually starts about age 50, so with highly compensated employees, so they're they're actually being moved out before they're um, they're ready, and then this. 
this uh, struggle with the middle classes, I think we're going to see that continue to get worse. And that's going to create a lot of stress. Um, another trend I think is families that are being forced to live apart in order to find work. And um, in 2006, there was uh, 3.6 million married couples uh, reported living apart just due to that's the only way they can find work. And uh, just to give you a typical, typical example, uh, uh, a male hits 50, was highly compensated, loses his work, he goes on to the open market as a contract employee. Um, the females are professionals, so she works in a, a different state. So they're working in two different states. If they have children that are young and entering adulthood, they end up going to a third state for employment. So what you have is you have the nuclear family spread out where each member is in a different, literally a different state. And so they're that's their support group. So their support group is uh, spread out, which which uh, really makes uh, both psychological and physical support uh, uh, difficult, and it it creates a strain on the uh, uh, the entire family. And I think we're going to be seeing more of this. Um, another trend is uh, problems with retirement. You know, when I did start doing a search on this, it was just lots and lots of these retirement problems in other countries, and I think we're going to start seeing it here in the U.S. as companies eliminate pensions. For example, in 2012, General Motors stopped paying uh, pension to its salaried workers. The public example was reported in the uh, city of Detroit bankruptcy proceedings that there was a precedent set for other communities to begin to uh, reduce pensions for uh, public workers as well as to default on what's owed uh, current retirees. And this is uh, forcing people to be dependent upon good health in old age so that they can continue working. And uh, in addition, uh, what uh, with, with no pensions, um, uh, younger people are finding that that their co-payments for health care and health care costs have actually increased. And uh, so more of their income is being dedicated to health care. As they age, that's going to increase as well. And so the result is there's really there's less income that they can dedicate to retirement and, and really very little... Uh, help from their employment for this. So I think we're going to see a lot of stress as um, as people enter into retirement age. It's going to start with baby boomers and then it's going to um, uh, continue with the uh, uh, generations uh, that uh, follow. I've got uh, uh, references on all of this. If you want to look some of these up, it's uh, pretty interesting uh, uh, stuff. and. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, trends for stress in the 21st century, the, the way I see it. Thanks.